Now let's set the record straight. There's no argument over the choice between peace and war. But there's only one guaranteed way you can have peace, and you can have it in the next second. Surrender. Admittedly, there's a risk in any course we follow other than this. But every lesson of history tells us that the greater risk lies in appeasement. And this is the specter our well-meaning liberal friends refuse to face, that their policy of accommodation is appeasement. And it gives no choice between peace and war, only between fight or surrender. If we continue to accommodate, continue to back and retreat, eventually we have to face the final demand, the ultimatum. And what then? When Nikita Khrushchev has told his people, he knows what our answer will be. He has told them that we are retreating under the pressure of the Cold War, and someday, when the time comes to deliver the final ultimatum, our surrender will be voluntary, because by that time, we will have been weakened from within spiritually, morally, and economically. He believes this because from our side he's heard voices pleading for peace at any price, or better read than dead, or as one commentator put it, he'd rather live on his knees than die on his feet. And therein lies the road to war, because those voices don't speak for the rest of us. You and I know and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. If nothing in life is worth dying for, when did this begin? Just in the face of this enemy? Or should Moses have told the children of Israel to live in slavery under the pharaohs? Should Christ have refused the cross? Should the patriots at Concord Bridge have thrown down their guns and refused to fire the shot heard round the world? The martyrs of history were not fools. And our honored dead, who gave their lives to stop the advance of the Nazis, didn't die in vain. Where then is the road to peace? Well, it's a simple answer after all. You and I have the courage to say to our enemies, there is a price we will not pay, there is a point beyond which they must not advance. <laughs> this, this is the meaning in the phrase of Barry Goldwater, peace through strength. Winston Churchill said the destiny of man is not measured by material computations. When great forces are on the move in the world, we learn we're spirits, not animals. And he said there's something going on in time and space and beyond time and space, which, whether we like it or not, spells duty. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness. Good morning, it's Saturday, five o'clock. I've been up since one. I woke up, didn't go back to sleep, so I tossed and turned. I was like, shit, I'm gonna go to work. So it's still dark out, but it's spreading, so. These things got good lights on them too, so. Anyway, that's the, this is probably how the Saturday's gonna go. My brother's gonna get up. He'll probably be here around nine to uh, get the turbo tool ready. We had a all day tractor back yesterday and it, or day four that, and it came back fine. And then when we started to use it yesterday with the spreader, it had a sensor, a message come up. The camshaft sensor was, uh, something wrong with it she started smoking real bad so they came down and uh, took the sensor out cleaned it off put it back and we had no problem after that so I don't know maybe where they had the motor out and everything maybe that got dirt on it or something but I went and hooked her up to the turbo until last night and she seemed to be doing all right after that so let's hope she does good the rest of the time new motor so Let's see. Let's hope so. Anyway, I put the computer and everything in it last night. And uh, got to go out here with him when he gets here today and make sure it's set right. But they're both identical tractors, other than one's a year older than the other. Um, so I just put the same numbers that I have in this and that one. So she should work out pretty good. So, happy Saturday, everybody.
once you buy a great clean out. Like I said last year, it works good, but it is a bitch to work on. You got Baron out there. They don't come through with the sealed Barons. So we're replacing them with sealed Barons. All the Barons that are going out are the ones that aren't sealed Barons. Is this a part of the Barons? No. Nah. Huh? I don't think so. That's where it rubbed it. It's war. War thing. I guess it looks like a... Yeah. Where's the baron at? Oh, I when it gets to that other metal how it starts to run oh yeah y'all hear that this word's wisdom <laughs> uh, hey. all right we got the bearing on now we're headed over we had one on the front front blades too we there was one bad but we went ahead and just fixed both of them so we put seal bearings in before too long we're gonna have all brand new bearings on her and then by that time we're gonna have to rebuild her So we're headed over to start working this manure in. All right, well, my brother had to go get some stuff out to pick up, so I'm getting his computer set with the GPS and everything, so she's good to go. So she's lined up pretty good. She does a good job, too, real pretty. These Great Plains are, I mean, they do a really good job. It's just they are shitty that they're barren just don't last long unless you get the seal bear we've been putting seal bears on her for probably three years whenever one of the regular ones goes out we haven't had a problem with them why they don't maybe the brand brand new ones come through with the seal baron but she's an older model and uh she didn't so she didn't come through with it but she does a pretty job though i mean them turbo maxes are nice but Really, when you turn them gangs, I mean, that's a lot. And it wears it out twice as quick. This thing right here does just as good. My buddy's got a Turbo Max at 24 foot, and it don't do no, no different than this one right here when you look at them, you know, out in the field working it up. So for half the price, I'd just buy a Turbo Shell and with all the fingers and baskets and blades on her, she does a good job. So that's what I'm doing now.
morning, it's Sunday. I'm out here turbo tilling with my brother's tractor. And as you can see, one of the wheels has fallen off the very first pass. I got it up there by the pole. The bearing went bad. The very first pass over here, the wheel fell off. So I moved it out of the way, put it up against the pole. I'm still going. It doesn't, doesn't really affect anything because she's in the ground 99% of the time. So she's holding her own. I'm going to get this field done. Then I'm going to pull that hub off and clean it all up. And I don't know if we got a bearing up at the farm or I got to wait for Monday. Today's Sunday. I got to wait for Monday to get a go get a bear and maybe a hub. Who knows if it hurt the hub? But Great Plains, once again, barons are horrible on these things. I hate them. It does a good damn job, but even on our Great Plains grain drill we used to have, you were changing bearings all the time. I don't know if it's in their design or what it is, but I have never had any problems with bearings on anything other than Great Plains. All of our deer stuff, I never have problems with bearings. These Great Plains, it's like you got to change bearings every time you want to use them. It just doesn't make any sense. Doesn't matter if it's the turbo till or the drill, it just, oh my God, it's just a nightmare. So it's Sunday, I'm gonna get this field done, pull it apart and call it a day, relax a little bit. Other than that, nothing really going on. I skip every other row there. She was a little bit deep, I had to pick her up, but as you can see, I skip every other row. I don't try to jack her right around here. But other than that, the tractor seems to be doing good with the new motor in it, so. Um, nothing's happened yet, so let's just say that much. We've got to break her in. They told us 100 hours, put a strain on her. Uh, this turbo till and this little bit of sand and ground, it'll put a strain on her. Um, Sometimes you don't know she's there, and then sometimes you get on a sand hill, you know she's there. So, not that it kills the tractor, but you can feel her pulling in, her power bar go up. But overall, she does good. But it'll break her in. We got 100 hours to break in. They said run her hard, something hard for four or five hours, pull wise. So, we'll do the turbo tilling, and we get caught up. We'll hook the big tractor up to the turbo till. And we got to get that gearbox for that other spreader. We get that gearbox and uh, get her done, and we'll hook her up to a spreader. That way, we'll have two of them going, so it don't take so long with just one. So, everybody like, subscribe, share. Um, not much going on other than just piddling, trying to get some ground ready for corn. Have a good Sunday.